This financial modeling guide is going to give you an overview of the most important things you need to know about financial modeling. Let's start with why. Why build a financial model at all? For many careers, financial modeling is a cornerstone skill set that's required as a financial analyst. Models are used for a variety of reasons, including executive decision making at a company, such as analyzing performance and strategic planning, project finance decisions about whether or not to invest in a capital project, corporate finance transactions such as mergers, acquisitions, divestitures, and capital raising, and other general corporate finance topics and transactions. So let's look at some Excel tips and tricks. All financial models are built in Excel, and it's important to be quick and effective when using Excel to build your model. Here are some quick fire tips. Use keyboard shortcuts as much as possible to speed up your modeling. Keep formulas and calculations simple and avoid long, complex formulas that other people can't understand. Use the grouping function to organize your model and keep it very neat and tidy. Use GoToSpecial as a way to audit and find hard codes within a model. Use an end of month function with if statements to make dynamic dates. Use index match instead of VLOOKUP to find information in a model. Use XNPV and XIRR so that you can match cash flows to specific dates. And use trace precedence and trace dependence to audit a model. All of these topics are covered in CFI's free Excel crash course and advanced Excel formulas course. Let's look at some best practices for building a model. In addition to the Excel tips we already gave you, here's how to structure a model in Excel effectively. Always use a color coding system, blue fonts for inputs and black fonts for formulas. Create standalone three statement models on one worksheet and use grouping to organize the statements. Clearly separate the assumptions and the drivers area from the rest of the model where the calculations are contained. Use headers and subheaders with bold shading to clearly distinguish sections. It's very important for other people to be able to jump into your model and understand what you've built. Use cell comments by pressing Shift F2 to make notes and descriptions about calculations and assumptions. Build in error checks for the balance sheet and cash flow statement, making sure that things balance and work properly. Repeat any information that allows users to follow your logic. For example, break formulas down into separate steps in the Excel worksheet, even if it's repetitive from information that's contained above. Avoid linking to other Excel workbooks unless absolutely necessary. This makes a very complicated web when you're linking out to other worksheets. Use iterative calculation to solve circular references. And finally, always use a lot of tables, charts, and graphs to summarize the important information and findings from your model. Let's look at how to actually build a forecast for a company. There are various approaches to forecasting. One is top-down analysis. This is where you start by looking at the market. TAM stands for Total Addressable Market and working your way down based on market share to finally find the company's revenue. Another approach is bottom-up analysis. This is where you start with underlying drivers of the business, say the number of stores that a company operates and the average size of those stores, and you build your way up to revenue, hence the name bottom-up versus top-down. Additionally, you can perform regression analysis, where you analyze the relationships between revenue and other factors in the business. You can use single or multivariable regression analysis to do this. These techniques are covered in CFI's budgeting and forecasting course. And of course, the simplest is to take a year-over-year -year growth rate. Very simple and straightforward, but sometimes much too simple and lacks the detail that's required. Once you know how to drive a forecast, you need to look at linking the financial statements. Let's look at the steps that are required for building an income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement. You start at the top of the income statement by calculating revenue, cost of goods sold, and as many items as you can. Once you reach EBITDA, you'll have issues calculating interest and depreciation without additional schedules. So at this point, you create supporting schedules for capital assets, 
where you can calculate depreciation and CapEx, as well as working capital schedules where you can calculate balance sheet items like accounts receivable, inventory, and accounts payable. Those schedules will enable you to finish the income statement and balance sheet except for cash. In order to arrive at cash, you have to actually build the cash flow statement to get the ending balance at the end of the period, which you link back up to the top of the balance sheet and the model is completely linked and flowing dynamically. In terms of further analysis, once you've built a three statement model, there are many other types of models that can be layered on. You could look at discounted cash flow analysis, a way of valuing a business. You could look at mergers and acquisitions, determining how attractive an investment opportunity is. Capital raising, analyzing the effect of issuing shares or raising debt for a company. You could look at a leveraged buyout or LBO and determine how much of an internal rate of return can be generated by using as much leverage as possible when buying a company. And finally, sensitivity analysis should be performed on all models to assess how sensitive a company is to changes in the drivers of the business. Once all these more advanced levels of modeling are complete, it's time to present the results of the model. It's important to create great visuals such as charts, graphs, or dashboards that display the findings of the model and the results. These visuals lead to better decision making at companies. If you want to learn more about building financial models in Excel, check out our FMVA certification program where you will learn to become a world-class financial analyst and build powerful and complex financial models in Excel. Thanks for joining us for this tutorial. We hope it's been helpful in explaining financial modeling.